Hi, my name is Lee Kotner, and I'm your instructor for MAT 225, uh, Dynamic Web Development. I'm going to walk you through our class uh, orientation, uh, at least introduction to the course through Blackboard. And even if you are already familiar with Blackboard, this is not just an introduction to Blackboard. It's actually uh, to explain where to find things for our class, how to do assignments, where to find, you know, when when things are due, and how to ask questions, things like that. So please go ahead and watch the whole thing. You are responsible for knowing everything that's in here, so uh, just be aware of that. Okay, so the first thing uh, I want to go ahead and point out is that the course in Blackboard is going to drop into the announcements section. Right now there are no announcements listed, um, but there will be throughout the semester. I'll be sending out announcements. And in addition to just posting them in Blackboard, I typically will also elect to send them as an email to students. So you need to be checking your email and um, you also need to be blogging into Blackboard every single week um, to see what is uh, important to be doing and what you're responsible for. So um, off to the left is the main navigation bar. Um, so under the overview section is announcements and then there are two other things here, class orientation and server connection. Those are sections that are actually found elsewhere in uh, the Blackboard class, but I've sort of pulled out shortcuts to them and put them up here so they're really easy to find because you might reference them frequently when the course begins so that you don't have to go digging around for them. Uh, so I'm going to click on class orientation for right now. And I want you to notice up here, um, first of all, where it says course is unavailable, that's, I haven't made it available, so you won't see that. Um, and you won't see this thing that says edit mode, that's because I'm a teacher. Okay, so. You'll see this thing up here though, it's breadcrumb trails, and so this will help you always know where you are in Blackboard. I have a lot of course links in this class, and so you might be in one section and you click on something and it takes you to an entirely different section. So if you ever feel lost at any point, always make sure that you look at the breadcrumb trails so that you can know where you're located. And if you ever feel like you're really deep inside of a section, you can always come back here to find sort of your uh, global links, your home base. Okay, so course syllabus is one of the first things that you should look at. Um, and if you click this, it's an external link to my teaching website. And you need to read all of the syllabus. You're responsible for everything in it. And um, the other thing, too, that I want to point out, and this is also in other places as well, is I want you to make note in your calendars of important deadlines that are related to the class. Later we'll talk about due dates and stuff, but this is about like dropping the class by a certain date or changing your uh, status to pass, no pass by a certain date, etc. So I want you to uh, go ahead and include that. Uh, I want you to go ahead and read everything, but I'm just going to skip into a couple of parts. Um, and something that is also here would be uh, under course requirements. You've got your textbooks uh, and required uh, lessons. So required is this book right here, and you need to uh, purchase that either through the bookstore it's been ordered, although they might not get them until the beginning of the semester, um, but you can also order them online like through Amazon, and it's anywhere between say 20 to $25 I believe at Amazon. I'm not sure how much it'll be at the bookstore. Um, and uh, for uh, later in the semester, uh, we have during these dates through October 13th through December 16th, basically two months, we have a course, required course subscription that you're going to need to purchase to lynda.com. Um, there are five comprehensive topic tutorials with downloadable files that are really good for the topics that we're going to be covering. And I see that as no, no different than purchasing a textbook. So you basically will uh, be required to do both of these things for successful completion of the class, um, although the top one, in theory, you might be able to get away with not owning. Uh, if you can find it, check out from a library or something, you'd be okay, but the bottom one you absolutely have to purchase. Furthermore, you're not going to be able to purchase it until uh, it's actually opened up on October 13th. Um, so just be aware of that. Okay, and the reason I haven't opened it up for the entire semester is because then it would cost you over $40 or somewhere around $40, and I'm just trying to save everybody money, um, and I'm only making it available for the duration of the time that you actually need to have access to it for the assignments. Okay, so next thing is software and computer requirements. Um, you know, 
MiraCosta is going to have some browser-ready guidelines for your browsers. Um, I'm going to uh, require that you use Google Chrome as one of your um, browsers and uh, actually I think I don't have it yeah I do have it listed here and uh, also the newest Firefox uh, browser and be aware that if you're on a non Intel Mac it can only run up to version 3.6 and I think it's at the time of the recording of this video I think it's up to somewhere around tw version 22 24 something like that so just be aware of how much older that is and uh, it's really not capable of doing a lot of things and um, it's just something that you need to know uh, that if you on, are on an older Mac that's not an Intel based processor that um, there might be some things that you can't do say with uh, CSS3 styling things like that that aren't going to show up properly um, anyway so there's the stuff now design software in terms of Photoshop and Illustrator um, Photoshop is a raster graphic image uh, editing tool and Illustrator is a vector graphic these are not required however a minimum of Photoshop would be highly highly recommended if you are proficient in other kinds of free software that you can get your hands on for image editing, uh, you're more than welcome to use it. I'm not going to ever do tutorials in anything but Photoshop for image editing. Um, so if you needed some assistance with Photoshop, even though I might not provide them specifically as part of this class, on this website, uh, my teaching website, you can find lots and lots of tutorials um, on how to do things in Photoshop. So. Uh, I do link to like crash courses and stuff like that though for people when they're not enrolled in you know a Photoshop class. So um, uh, and let's go to the bottom. Again, you're res responsible for all these things, so please read them. Just because I'm skipping over them now doesn't mean that you don't need to look at it. So for grading though, this is something people always care about. Um, this is how the grading is broken down, so you can take a look at that. Okay, so let's go back over here. That's the course syllabus. Um, and then these other links are really helpful. Don't really um, take for granted the student help desk. If you go to the student help desk, there are a lot of questions that you might have that are answered. Even things like, how do I, you know, drop a class? How do I add a class with a permission number? Even though, I guess, if you aren't already a member of the class, you wouldn't be able to see the tutorial. But, um, but, but that link the MiraCosta Student Help Desk. In fact, let's let's go ahead and open it. So if you are someone who hasn't added the class yet, this is the web address that you could go to and you could look through here, um, look through all these sections and eventually it will tell you, I think it's a surf tutorial, you would see how to use a permission number. It's a common question I get. Okay, um, more stuff about Blackboard. This is about the video that you're watching right now. And uh, this link right here, connecting to the server via FTP, if we click on that, it is the same link as this one. This is one of the ones that I made as a shortcut so that it's not buried deep down uh, in the, uh, the Blackboard site. You can access it here because this is something you're going to commonly need access to probably at least at first until you uh, get used to the odd passwords and things like that. So <clears throat> now also I am requiring that you read the security issues with PHP article um, or disclaimer I guess um, and basically by staying in the class you're sort of agreeing to this um, so please read that and uh, recommended free code editor if you don't own Dreamweaver um, and at this point you probably should have some sort of code editor but like if you're not really uh, someone who does deal with a lot of code, maybe because you uh, are using some other tool. Uh, this one's free if uh, you don't own something already. And I like this one a lot. There are a lot of other ones out there, but I just happen to like this one. Okay, and uh, so that's the uh, class orientation folder, and I want you to go through everything in it. Uh, in addition to class orientation, I'm just going to skip down here really quickly, is something that I also require, and I will let you know this in the announcement, is in the, in the discussion board, okay, one of the two of the first things that you have to do in this class is one, read the course FAQs or frequently asked questions. A lot of the questions that students end up having right off the bat are going to be answered here.
please read them before you start asking me questions via email where the answers are already posted. Additionally, but, you know, also if you don't see, if you, after reading everything, if you overlook something or you didn't see an answer that you needed, you know, f please come back here and feel free to post a question to FAQs. So basically what FAQs is for is essentially to ask questions that are non-technical questions. So if you have a technical question about, you know, why your PHP stuff isn't working, don't ask it here. Instead, like if you have a question about where to turn something in or, you know, maybe if there's a date conflict, for instance, like if it one place it says something's due on one day and another place it seems like it's due on a different day, this is the place to ask about it because, you know, I, I will admit sometimes I make mistakes in here and I am more than happy to correct them and please let me know immediately if you see something that doesn't jive for you. Um, now, week one, class introductions, this is mandatory and it is for a grade, and you should know when I say it's mandatory, if you don't take this, uh, if you don't post to this as assigned um, before the first week, you will, actually, I think it says before Thursday, yeah, the last post has to be done before Sunday, but if you don't do the first post uh, soon, then, you know, right off the bat, I will drop you or I can drop you from the class. Um, I may try to contact you first, but you need to understand that this is no different than in an on-ground class when you show up for the first day. In an on-ground class, if you don't show up the first day, the instructor typically will drop you. And not only is that an option, a lot of times it's the responsibility for the instructor to do that because there are other people who are waiting to get into the class and you've just shown that you're not really that interested enough to actually show up. So make sure you do this. In addition to that, you'll see when we get to the assignments that there are some things due before the census date. Um, when they do census for the classes, they're basically asking us, who do you need to drop because they're not participating? If you don't participate in other graded events, I have the right to drop you also. Um, so that's really important for you to know right off the bat. Okay, so I'm going to jump back up here. We've already talked about going to the server connection. Um, let's look at the timeline, okay? So under due dates, it's exactly what it sounds like it is. But before I actually show your assignment due dates, this is really important. This is how strongly I feel about you knowing the drop deadlines and the conversion date deadlines as I put them before your actual due dates. There are a lot of other due dates here and you need to probably look at this web link that's uh, for student dates and deadlines and you need to put that stuff in your calendar um, because you're going to be responsible. If you don't drop the class on time, I have given you plenty of notice, um, so I, I am sort of loath to change grades and give people W's when really I gave them an F because they didn't drop in time. That is your responsibility, so um, you've been warned, okay? I, I don't really do very well with appeals uh, whenever I've had clear communication with students about that. So um, if you feel at any time that you might not do well in the class before this pass con no pass conversion date, um, you're more than welcome to switch to a no pass grading system. If you do that, you just need to know that if you're working towards a certificate for the web or something, you won't be able to get credit for that uh, class as part of your certification uh, process. Um, so just be aware of that if you do make that decision. Um, but I, you know, I'm really a strong believer in, you know, just sticking with the education that you've chosen. And uh, I think that most people who stay in this class are going to do very well. So I don't really encourage people to switch to the conversion. But if it really means a decision as to whether or not you drop the class, I will support changing it from pass to no pass. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. So down below, these are your actual due dates. I put grade percentages and gives you like a little hint of what it is. So again, put these in your calendar so you don't forget, okay? Um, but also you need to be checking in anyway. All right, so the next thing would be the weekly schedule. And for the sake of uh, brevity, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this lecture here and explaining the class structure and you can take a break and then move to the next one that finishes my introduction to the class so uh, that this one's just not too long, okay? And we'll talk about the weekly schedule in the next one as well as the other course content.